I think Europe is now confronting a series of challenges. I mean, the 3M I talked to you about. In terms of market openings, uh, Europe has this huge problem with its uh, um, Mediterranean members, Italy, Spain, France, Portugal, Greece, uh, who are um, not willing to um, open their agricultural markets to imports from uh, uh, North Africa specifically. And the reform of the common agricultural policy in Europe will only happen in three years' time. So we are not going to see any change in that respect we, before the cap is going to be reformed in 2014. In terms of money, I don't think we're going to see any, any kind of improvement, of course, especially given uh, the current financial challenges. And as far as mobility is concerned, um, it's, uh, mobility pol uh, policies in Europe are not uh, a domain of the EU as such. So every member state has got its own migratory policies and agreements on a bilateral basis with the third states. Uh, what the EU is trying now is to push member states to grant uh, bona fide sort of mobility opportunities, not just to businessmen and students and researchers from mi the Middle East and North Africa, but to any person who might be traveling to Europe for uh, bona fide reasons. But of course, uh, unofficially, we uh, know that member a lot of member states uh, refrain from accepting that kind of framework. So we're not, I don't think we're going to see any change in that respect. And the third, the last point I want to make is about um, a political vision. I mean, it's, uh, in Europe, it's striking how no one talks about um, how the region is shaping up in terms of new balances of power politically at the domestic level. And there hasn't been a debate on uh, how Europe will engage with the Islamist forces in the region. There hasn't been. And it's, uh, this is a domain, of course, of member states. Uh, but whereas we have seen much more open uh, a, a debate and discussions in the U.S. Uh, um, policy community and policy-making community, uh, this hasn't been the case in Europe. And we know that some member states um, are refraining from having that kind of debate, and this is not getting to the top of the EU agenda, which implies that then the EU uh, doesn't have a say and is not talking to Islamists, if not on purely an unofficial level in the region, which then, of course, further diminishes its uh, weight and role and capability to influence uh, uh, developments on the ground. Last point I want to make is about coordin transatlantic coordination between EU and US in terms of democracy promotion in the region now. Uh, the EU has appointed a new special representative for the southern Mediterranean, B Bernardino Leon. And of course, the US State Department has got now an office for transitions uh, headed by Bill Taylor. Um, we, uh, when I met uh, with Bernardino Leon last week, of course, one of the questions was, so what kind of coordination are you envisaging with your counterpart in the U.S. administration? And the reply was, we will be traveling together to the region. So again, I don't think we're going to see um, a stronger coordination in terms of policies, but maybe more coordinated messages from the US and the EU, and an attempt by both sides to bring in regional actors uh, behind important policy decisions in the region.